I'm doing well. Welcome back to another episode of the Beer Knits podcast where we talk all things knitting, crocheting, sometimes cross-stitching, and God willing, sometimes soon, showing off the results of spinning, which I have just started picking up. So I don't know when that's going to come into play. I'm still working on it, doing a lot better than in the last video I posted reviewing my new e-spinner. So I'm really proud of where that's going, but not quite ready to show it off yet. So anyway, we are headed to Louisville, Kentucky tomorrow for our vacation on the Bourbon Trail, and we're really looking forward to that. So I wanted to make sure that I got an episode in because I won't be able to post one for at least another month because after we get back from our vacation, I work four or five days and then Saturday, May 4th, my job is sending me to Austin for a conference that starts that next Sunday. Um, I have thoughts, bad ones, about conferences that start on a weekend and requires me to give up an entire weekend to go and do work things. It's kind of like, don't I already give y'all enough of my, my free time since I'm working like 60 hours a week? But... Anywho, that is where I will be. I'm really looking forward to this upcoming week, just spending time with Scott, kind of reconnecting because I've been so busy with work that we don't get a lot of time together because <laughs> um, his work schedule is kind of crappy too. So it'll be nice to just spend time together and enjoy not having to log into my laptop every single day. Before we really dive in um, into my finished projects, the first thing I want to do is excitedly show you my finished go-go throw um, by Amba O'Brien. It is finally done and it is massive. It is massive, um, partially because I added a fourth row of lace on all of the color repeats. So that did add some extra length, but... Even so, I think it still would have been pretty long without it. Like, longer, it seems like it's longer than it is wide, so it looks incredibly thin for a blanket. I shouldn't even say incredibly thin. It's not that bad, but it is huge. So this is where I finished off, was in the purples and started in the reds, and it is just gigantic, but I love it. Oh, oh, that's a look. But I love it. It's deceptively warm despite the fact that it is lace. And because it's pretty long, I feel like I can get away with wearing it. It's like kind of a big bulky shawl if I really wanted to. But um, even as a blanket, it's pretty warm despite the, the laciness of it. So I'm always surprised when that happens. But it actually doesn't look bad as a shawl. I hadn't taken a look at how this looks yet and it's not terrible. I do love it. It was made with the 2023 Rainbow Advent, Advent from Moon Glow Yarn Company. She always does her advents in rainbows. At least she has so far. So if you are interested in making doesn't have to be this blanket, but if you're interested in making something with rainbow yarn, you don't necessarily like a surprise every day and you know where it's going, I believe she is going to release 2024's Rainbow Advent soon, so you can go ahead and purchase that. So they ship in August, I believe is the plan. So definitely go ahead and make sure to check that out. And again, this is the Go Go Throw by Amba O'Brien. I knew that I wanted to make this blanket with this rainbow yarn as soon as I saw it. And I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. So hooray, it's finally done. My 2023 advent blanket is done. I guess that makes two of them now because this one was also an advent blanket. This was my Pancake and Lulu advent. And this is now my Moonglow advent. And I am working on others, which I'll get to in a minute. My next finished object are these Serene Socks by Kim Craddock over at 3 by the Sea Designs. This is in their, oh let's just tuck in that end there, 
This is from their Tulip Festival sock set. And I started knitting these over Easter just because um, I like to have a new start for any holiday. I like something themed. I like something fun. And these really fit the bill, especially because up until like this week, it has been so rainy and gray and didn't really feel like spring. So I felt like I just really needed it to work on this in my life to remember that spring is coming. Spring is basically here now. I love these so much. They are, again, the Tulip Festival. It was a sock set that I purchased um, as soon as they released it. And I think it's absolutely gorgeous. The pattern is, again, the Serene Socks by Kim Craddock of 3 by the Sea Designs. And it is a very simple rib. They are actually doing a um, make along right now for these serene socks if you want to grab the pattern and join in because it is really fun. I mean it looks like a simple rib and it and it is but there's something a little bit extra with it and it seems just super super squishy. The pattern comes for both fingering and DK weight so you can choose your poison if you will. These are of course fingering weight and I don't know if you can see it but it's on their sparkly base. Um, which makes it a little extra special in my opinion. And there's also an option to continue the pattern around the entire sock. So on the second sock, I almost had to make the entire top section twice because I forgot that I was only doing the pattern across the front of the sock. And so on the second one, I'd actually done it the entire way around because it's really easy to do, right? It's a, it's a simple conversion. Of course, they have the instructions there to do it. And I just lost my marbles and forgot that I had chosen to only do it on the front of the sock. So I had gotten to about here on the second sock and was like, oh. And um, so we had gone to visit my parents this past Wednesday because my dad wanted help setting up their gazebo for the summer. Um, so I grabbed my laptop and we drove up there so Scott could help him go ahead and do that. And on the way... <laughs> On the way there in the car, it's like an hour and a half drive, I realized that mistake and almost threw these out the window off the turnpike. Um, I was so angry. So most of the car ride there and back that day, I spent re-knitting this entire section. And I'm actually proud of myself because I did it. Um, it did set me back a little bit, but not too badly because then I was able to just focus on these for the next couple of days. I really wanted to get these done before our trip to Louisville so that I could pack a new set of socks with me to work on during the week. I don't like taking um, sock whips with me just because I finish them really quickly and then, you know, I have to carry a backup with me just in case. Um, so I really just wanted to get these done and off my plate so I could start something new. The next project that I am working on is my Lily Scrap Blanket using the Haunted Mansion um, daily, daily, I don't want to say advent because it's not an advent, but it's a daily yarn opening situation <laughs> that I got for Halloween of 2023. Um, so again, it's Haunted Mansion themed and this is what it currently looks like the last time I spoke to you. I was here, so in two weeks I've knit this much, which doesn't seem like a lot, but given the fact that I've had a couple finishes, it's not terrible. And I really like the way that it's coming out. I will, I will say it's not really giving me Haunted Mansion vibes, but I still really like it, so I can't complain because the yarn is gorgeous and it's like uber, uber soft. Like I'm really enjoying knitting it, but I'm not really getting the Haunted Mansion vibes. So each of these colorways came with a card about a character in the Haunted Mansion that it corresponds to. And when you look at it that way, it really does. Um, but for me, if I think Haunted Mansion, I think a lot of like purples, greens, um, blacks, grays, things like that. And I'm not quite getting that with this, but it's okay because I do love like this color here. Super gorgeous. I'm doing it in order of each day. So I actually have to go back and look at the videos I recorded for Vlogtober and <laughs> remind myself which yarn I opened on which day, which is actually a really good way to do this. Um, so I'm going in order except for this color and this color got mixed up. So when I started the blanket, I missed it. 
I need, I should knit with light is the uh, moral of the story. I confused this for this. So these two are out of order so far, but I don't think it makes too much of a difference. Um, it, I was originally thinking maybe it was a fade given the order of these colors that I was opening them in, but they're not, um, luckily. So it doesn't really impact anything and you wouldn't notice it unless I told you. But I always like to call out my mistakes because I'm hard on myself as a person, a knitter, a worker, and everything. I think I'm going to enjoy this. This is coming on the trip with me to Louisville. I think it's perfect passenger princess knitting and I'm going to enjoy working on it. Um, it's it's mindless. It's a two row repeat and one of them is a rest row. <laughs> My last work in progress is barely a work in progress. I just got it started so it would be easier to work on it while we're traveling. But this is my second Av sweatshirt from the Little Wolf Knits and you can see like it's barely there. So this is one of her colorways on her boucle base called Schooner. And the colorway is Miami Beach, which I think is gorgeous. And all I did here was I cast on and I did the short row shaping for the back. And that's where we are with it. So now once we are well on our way, I will be able to just knit the next eight inches of stockinette. No problem. Because I believe that's that's all it takes for this part of the sweater. Of course, there are sleeves, there's a front with, you know, neck shaping that I'll have to do and all that stuff. But I figured this would be really easy car knitting or brewery knitting or because it's the Bourbon Trail distillery knitting <laughs> when we get there. And I think it's going to be gorgeous. I also have her 420 base in the colorway Frozen, which I'll show you um, probably the next time that we're on. It is a DK weight and it's just this beautiful, it's basically this kind of tealy aqua blue color and that is going to be for the collar and the ribbing on the bottom. I believe that's where it goes. I think it's going to look really cute and will be a perfect spring sweater if I can just crack this out. So that is the hope, but we'll see because I have a lot of projects that I'm taking with me on this trip um, to keep myself entertained because there will be a lot of driving and there's also going to be a lot of yarn stores. I like some variety and because it's my week off, darn it, I'm going to enjoy the ability to just pick up my knitting whenever I want to practically uninterrupted. So yeah, really pumped about this. It looks like it's going to be a really comfortable sweater just based on the photos that I I've seen on the pattern and I'm also part of her wolf pack so people are posting photos in the discord all of the time and it just looks like a really cozy comfy spring sweater that I am looking forward to. The last things that I have to show you aren't really whips but they are about to be whips. So I wound up two sock yarns to take on this trip with me because I just could not decide which one to start. So I'm actually taking two. So remember all that stuff I told you in the beginning about how I don't like to bring back up yarn to like help sp save space. Yeah. Forget I said any of that. I'm, I'm nothing if I'm not extra. The first yarn that I wound up is this colorway called Frankly Lisa by Mama Jess Knits. And when she released this, I held back. I really truly refrained from buying this because the last thing I need is more, more yarn, more bright, colorful, beautiful yarn. Um, but then Kay from the Crazy Sock Lady knit this up and it just looks absolutely beautiful. She made a pair of socks with it, which is my intention as well, but they looked gorgeous and when it came up again on my feed, or I think she posted that she was doing another round of pre-orders, I was like, fine. <laughs> if we must, then I must. So that's this. So this is one option. Honestly, I'll probably knit on both. I have enough needles to do it. I'm probably just going to do both. But, but this is the other option. So this is from uh, Arkansas Yarn Company. It's on their sparkly base. 
and it is called Knit Tea Natty. So it is an exclusive colorway that was dyed for the Knitty Natty um, Love and Stitches members, and it too is uh, really, really gorgeous. It's like this pretty ballerina pink with some greens and yellows, and to me, this is quintessential spring. Like, you know how I said, like, Tulip Festival was very springy? This also screams spring to me. It's not as maybe in your face as Tulip Festival was, but it's pretty up there, and it's, it's subtle and beautiful, and part of the reason I chose these two is because they didn't come in sock sets. So I don't have to worry about changing colors or whatever. I can cast them on and just knit to my heart's content. So these are my two options. I'm probably going to knit them up. Whichever set I don't finish on this trip, if I finish any, will probably come with me when I go on my work trip to Austin. Um, because it is a four hour plane ride, which means a probably six to eight hour travel day for it's, it's an eight hour travel day at least, um, because of how far away the airports are for me. So it's going to be a long day. I'm going to have a lot of knitting time and yeah, so I figured might as well wind it up now and just be prepared if I don't. Uh, work on both of them during our vacation this week. So these are my two options. If you have a preference, I'm curious. I'm not going to listen to your opinions at all. It's going to be like whatever mood strikes me, but I'm curious to know which one you would choose to tackle first because they're both so pretty. I have a hunch I'm going to do the Frankly Lisa, to be honest, but I don't know. This one's sparkly and it's speaking to me in some type of language. So, options. That is everything I have to show from a knitting fiber whatever perspective. Like I said, we're going on vacation tomorrow and I'm really excited. I still need to pack, but I've done almost all of the house stuff that I need to do to get ready. I've done all of the laundry, so it's really just taking everything, throwing it in a suitcase, um, and waking up at the crack of dawn tomorrow. We are stopping in Pittsburgh on our way out there. So I'm hoping to get to Moon and Yarn Craft Room tomorrow. Cross your fingers for me that the hours don't change before we're able to get out there. But really excited about that. There are a couple things that we kind of want to do in Pittsburgh, depending what the time is like. We're literally only there for a night, an afternoon and a night, depending what time we leave in the morning. So it's not like we have a ton of time, but that is the one thing on um, our list of things to do out there that I absolutely want to do. I am listening to the Great Witches Baking Show, which is meh. So we're reading it slash listening to it for the Halloween Knit Along in my knitting groups Discord. And... There's something about it, I'm finally starting to get into it, but there's something about it that's not resonating with me, and I'm going to blame it on the narrator. I think, um, comparatively to the Vampire Knitting Club, that narrator was amazing. Like, she did a really good job with all the character voices. Um, you didn't even realize that you were being read to half the time because you could just get absorbed and it was great. But there's something about this narrator that's very, I don't know, her accent is very, I don't know if lilting is the right word, but the way that she talks takes me out of the story. I think, I think, and I haven't proven this yet, but from what I've picked up, in the way that she speaks. I want to say she herself is like Scottish trying to do an American accent is what it sounds like to me. And there are times when she's talking where it gets confused. And sometimes I don't know which character is speaking if you get my drift. So if it's like the main character, sometimes the accent will slip through and I will think it's a different character when it's not. So I think I'm getting used to it and I'm more absorbed in the story now. I have maybe 90 minutes left in the book and I'm enjoying it now. But in the beginning, it took me a little while to really just ignore the whole accent thing. It's probably fine, but those of you who also listen to audiobooks know that the narrator can make or break the book for you. 
And in this case, I think it almost broke it, but we're actually, we're going to be okay. I'm enjoying it. For our trip, I'm going to take um, a few books with me. I haven't decided which ones yet, but I will keep you posted. Something that Scott now enjoys about me, but that he has never experienced before, is that when I go on vacation, I go on vacation. I'm going to do a ton of stuff, but I'm also going to laze around in bed and take a bunch of naps, and I'm going to read a lot. <laughs> so typically... Um, his idea of vacation is like, we're up at 7 a.m., we are out the door by 8, and we are doing a tour, we're hiking, we're going to a place, and we're going to eat food. And that's his idea of vacation. In my vacation, I'm just like, I'm going to wake up when my body says, all right, and then I'm going to sit in bed, watch TV, read for an hour or two, then I'm going to lazily put clothes on. And my dog is walking back and forth in front of my tripod um, because he paces. So apologies if they're shaking. Um, enjoy the seasickness. So I'm very lazy on vacations. Like I'm still going to get up and I'm going to do things. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm on vacation. I don't like having a schedule unless there's like a, a specific tour or something that we have to do. So we are, we've always been very different in that regard. But it's starting to, I think, rub off on him because... When we went to Tennessee the last time, um, we went to Nashville, he was like, I could get used to this. This actually isn't uh, terrible. I don't feel like I'm being lazy. It's nice. I'm getting reading in. I'm like doing things. And I was like, see, this is a vacation. <laughs> so yeah, how do you guys vacation? Do you like to run around and do too much? I think Disney last year killed us. That was not a vacation. That was a marathon. And not my idea. Like we had a ton of fun. I think everyone has a ton of fun, but it's exhausting. It's not a vacation to me. Um, so how do you guys vacation? Are you like, we're not going to set a schedule for ourselves or are you more like, uh, more like Scott is where you have spreadsheets? I don't know. Tell me. I think that is everything. Like I said, uh, there won't be a podcast for, a few weeks, but I am going to try and vlog our vacations. So maybe there will be something going up when we get back. We'll see. We're going to see uh, some cool things. We're going to go to a couple yarn shops. We're going to go to Mammoth Cave. So there will be stuff to post about. Most of it's going to be distilleries and breweries. So um, maybe some sightseeing. I don't know. Could be interesting, could be not. We'll see how it how it shakes out at the end and if there's something to post. If not, it'll be a while before I post something again. And I'm really sad because with us going away this week and then me going away for another week for work, I'm not going to be able to practice spinning for quite some time. So that's really depressing. I did get some more fiber to work with and experiment with and see what I enjoy working with. And I would really like to do that. And my schedule is not allowing me. And I'm becoming very resentful that I work so much. Anyway, I guess that is it for today. Like I said, I would love to hear how you guys vacation, which yarn you would start knitting with first. What? Just stop and say hi. Whatever. Just leave a comment. Say hi. Um, gives me something to do in the car. I'm responding to you guys. I think that would be really fun. And otherwise, I will see you when I see you. It was great to work this in before our trip. And yeah, I'm going to go finish doing some chores and hopefully pack painlessly. So have a great next few weeks. I hope you get a ton of crafting time in and I will see you around. Bye.